Cybrarian presents Robert E. Howard's Call the Conqueror. The Mirrors of Tuzun Thun. courtesy of unsplash.com audio samples courtesy of youtube audio library additional voices by shazria sublime, out of space, out of time. Poe. There comes even to kings the time of great weariness. Then the gold of the throne is brass, the silk of the palace becomes drab, the gems in the diadem sparkle drearily, like the ice of the white seas. The speech of men is as the empty rattle of a jester's ball, and the feel comes of things unreal. Even the sun is copper in the sky, and the breath of the green ocean is no longer fresh. Cull sat upon the throne of Velusia, and the hour of weariness was upon him. They moved before him in an endless, meaningless panorama, men, women, priests, events and shadows of events, things seen and things to be attained, but like shadows they came and went, leaving no trace upon his consciousness save that of a great mental fatigue. Yet Cull was not tired, there was a longing in him of things beyond himself and beyond the Volusian court. An unrest stirred at him, and strange luminous dreams roamed his soul. At his bidding there came to him Brul, the spear slayer, warrior of Pictland, from the islands beyond the west. Lord King, you are tired of the life of the court. Come with me upon my galley. Let us roam the tides for a space. Nay, Cull rested his chin moodily upon his mighty hand. I am weary beyond all these things. The cities hold no lure for me, and the borders are quiet. I hear no more the sea songs I heard when I lay as a boy on the booming crags of Atlantis, and the night was alive with blazing stars. No more do the green woodlands beckon me as of old. There is a strangeness upon me, and a longing beyond life's longings. Go. Brill went forth in a doubtful mood, leaving the king brooding upon his throne. Then to Cull stole a girl of the court, and whispered, Great king, Seek to Zun Thun, the wizard. The secrets of life and death are his, and the stars in the sky, the lands beneath the seas. Cull looked at the girl. Fine gold was her hair, and her violet eyes were slanted strangely. She was beautiful, but her beauty meant little to Cull. To Zun Thun, he repeated. Who is he? A wizard of the elder race. He lives here in... Belusia, by the lake of visions, in the house of a thousand mirrors. All things are known to him, Lord King. He speaks with the dead, and holds converse with the demons of the lost lands. Color rose. I will seek out this mummer, but no word of my going. Do you hear? I am your slave, my lord. And she sank to her knees meekly but the smile of her scarlet mouth was cunning behind Cull's back, and the gleam of her narrow eyes was crafty. Cull came to the house of Tuzun Thun, beside the Lake of Visions. Wide and blue stretched the waters of the lake, 
and many a fine palace rose upon its banks. Many swan-winged pleasure boats drifted lazily upon its hazy surface, and evermore there came the sound of soft music. Tall and spacious, but unpretentious, rose the house of a thousand mirrors. The great door stood open, and Cull ascended the broad stair, and entered, unannounced. There in a great chamber, whose walls were of mirrors, he came upon Tuzun Thun, the wizard. The man was ancient as the hills of Zalgara. Like wrinkled leather was his skin, but his cold grey eyes were like sparks of sword steel. Cull of Valusia, my house is yours, said he, bowing with old-time courtliness and motioning Cull to a throne-like chair. You are a wizard, I have heard, said Cull bluntly, resting his chin upon his hand and fixing his somber eyes upon the man's face. Can you do wonders? The wizard stretched forth his hand. His fingers opened and closed like a bird's claw. Is it not a wonder that this blind flesh obeys the thoughts of my mind? I walk, I breathe, I speak. Are they not all wonders? Carl meditated a while, and then spoke. Can you summon up demons? I, I can summon up a demon more savage than any in Ghostland, by smiting you in the face. Carl started, then nodded. But the dead, can you talk to the dead? I talk with the dead always, as I am talking now. Death begins with birth, and each man begins to die when he is born. Even now you are dead, King Kull, because you were born. But you, you are older than men become. Do wizards never die? Men die when their times come. No later, no sooner. Mine has not come. Cull turned these answers over in his mind. Then it would seem that the great wizard of Valusia is no more than an ordinary man. And I have been duped in coming here. Tuzun Thun shook his head. Men are but men. And the greatest men are they who soonest learn the simpler things. Nay, look into my mirrors, Cull. The ceiling was a great many mirrors and the walls were mirrors, perfectly joined, yet many mirrors of many sizes and shapes. Mirrors are the world, Carl, droned the wizard. Gaze into my mirrors and be wise. Carl chose one at random and looked into it intently. The mirrors upon the opposite wall were reflected there, reflecting others, so that he seemed to be gazing down a long, luminous corridor formed by mirror behind mirror. And far down this corridor moved a tiny figure. Cull looked long ere he saw that the figure was the reflection of himself. He gazed and a queer feeling of pettiness came over him. It seemed that that tiny figure was the true Cull, representing the real proportions of himself. So he moved away and stood before another. Look closely, Cull. That is the mirror of the past, he heard the wizard say. Grey fogs obscured the vision, great billows of mist, ever heaving and changing like the ghost of a great river. Through these fogs, Cull caught swift, fleeting visions of horror and strangeness. Beasts and men moved there, and shapes neither men nor beast, great exotic blossoms glowing through the greyness. Tall tropic trees towered high over reeking swamps, where reptilian monsters wallowed and bellowed. The sky was ghastly with flying dragons, and the restless seas rocked and roared and beat endlessly along the muddy beaches. Man was not, yet man was the dream of the gods, and strange were the nightmare forms that glided through the noisome jungles. Battle and onslaught were there and frightful love. Death was there, for life and death go hand in hand. 
Across the slimy beaches of the world sounded the bellowing of the monsters, and incredible beasts loomed through the streaming curtain of the incessant rain. This is of the future. Cull looked in silence. See you what? A strange world, said Cull heavily. The seven empires are crumbled to dust and are forgotten. The restless green waves roar for many a fathom above the eternal hills of Atlantis. The mountains of Lemuria to the west are the islands of an unknown sea. Strange savages roam the elder lands, and new lands flung strangely from the deeps, defiling the elder shrines. Belusia has vanished, and all the nations of today, they of tomorrow are strangers. They know us not. Time strides onward, said Tuzun Thun calmly. We live today. What care we for tomorrow or yesterday? The wheel turns and nations rise and fall. The world changes and times return to savagery to rise again through the long age. Ere Atlantis was, Belusia was, and ere Belusia was, the elder nations were. I, we too, trampled the shoulders of lost tribes in our advance. You, who have come from the green sea hills of Atlantis to seize the ancient crown of Belusia, you think my tribe is old. We who held these lands ere the Valusians came out of the east. In the days before there were men in the sea lands, but men were here when the elder tribes rode out of the wastelands, and men before men, tribe before tribe. The nations pass and are forgotten, for that is the destiny of man. Yes, said Cull. Yet is it not a pity that the beauty and glory of men should fade like smoke on a summer sea? For what reason, since that is their destiny? I brood not over the lost glories of my race, nor do I labor for races to come. Live now, Cull. Live now. The dead are dead, the unborn are not. What matters men's forgetfulness of you when you have forgotten yourself in the silent worlds of death? Gaze in my mirrors and be wise. Cull chose another mirror and gazed into it. That is the mirror of deepest magic. What see ye? Cull. Not but myself. Look closely, Cull. Is it in truth you? Cull stared into the great mirror, and the image that was his reflection returned his gaze. I come before this mirror, mused Cull, chin on fist, and I bring this man to life. That is beyond my understanding. Since first I saw him in the still waters of the lakes of Atlantis, till I saw him again in the gold rim mirrors of Velusia. He is I, a shadow of myself, part of myself. I can bring him into being or slay him at my will, yet he halted. Strange thoughts whispering through the vast, dim recesses of his mind like shadowy bats flying through a great cavern. Yet where is he when I stand not in front of a mirror? May it be in man's power thus lightly to form and destroy a shadow of life and existence. How do I know that when I step back from the mirror, he vanishes into the void of naught? Nay, Barbalka, am I the man or is he? Which of us is the ghost of the other? Mayhap these mirrors are but windows through which we look into another world. Does he think the same of me? Am I no more than a shadow, a reflection of himself, to him as he is to me? And if I am a ghost, 
What sort of a world lives upon the other side of this mirror? What armies ride there and what kings rule? This world is all I know. Knowing not of any other, how can I judge? Surely there are green hills there and booming seas and wide plains where men ride to battle. Tell me, wizard who is wiser than most men, tell me there are worlds beyond our worlds. A man has eyes, let him see, answered the wizard. Who would see must first believe. The hours drifted by, and Kull still sat before the mirrors of Tuzun Thun, gazing into that which depicted himself. Sometimes it seemed that he gazed upon hard shallowness. At other times, gigantic depths seemed to loom before him. Like the surface of the sea was the mirror of Tuzun Thun. Hard as the sea in the sun's slanting beams, in the darkness of the stars, when no eye can pierce her depths. Vast and mystic as the sea, when the sun smites her in such a way that the watcher's breath is caught at the glimpse of the tremendous abysses. So was the mirror in which Kull gazed. At last the king rose with a sigh and took his departure still wondering. And Kull came again to the house of a thousand mirrors. Day after day he came and sat for hours before the mirror. The eyes looked out at him, identical with his. Yet Kull seemed to sense a difference, a reality that was not of him. Hour upon hour he would stare, with strange intensity, into the mirror. Hour after hour, the image gave back his gaze. The business of the palace and of the council went neglected. The people murmured. Kull's stallion stamped restlessly in his stable, and Kull's warriors diced and argued aimlessly with one another. Kull heeded not. At times he seemed on the point of discovering some vast, unthinkable secret. He no longer thought of the image in the mirror as a shadow of himself. The thing, to him, was an entity, similar in outer appearance, yet basically as far from Kull himself as the poles are far apart. The image, it seemed to Kull, had an individuality apart from Kull's. He was no more dependent on Kull than Kull was dependent on him. And day by day, Kull doubted in which world he really lived. Was he the shadow, summoned at will by the other? Did he instead of the other live in a world of delusion, the shadow of the real world? Kull began to wish that he might enter the personality beyond the mirror for a space, to see what might be seen. Yet should he manage to go beyond that door, could he ever return? Would he find a world identical with the one in which he moved? A world of which his was but a ghostly reflection? Which was reality and which illusion? At times Cull halted to wonder how such thoughts and dreams had come to enter his mind. And at times he wondered if they came from his own volition or... Here his thoughts would become mazed. His meditations were his own. No man ruled his thoughts and he would summon them at his pleasure. Yet could he? Were they not his bats, coming and going, not at his pleasure, but at the bidding or ruling of... Of whom? The gods? The women who wove the webs of fate? Cull could come to no conclusion, for at each mental step he became more and more bewildered, in a hazy fog of illusory assertions and refutations. This much he knew, that strange visions entered his mind, like flying unbidden from the whispering void of non-existence. Never had he had these thoughts, but now they ruled his mind, sleeping and waking, so that he seemed to walk in a daze at times, and his sleep was fraught with strange, monstrous dreams. Tell me, wizard, he said, sitting before the mirror, his eyes fixed intently upon his image. How can I pass yon door? I am not sure that that is the real world, and this is the shadow. At least, that which I see must exist in some form. See and believe, droned the wizard. Man must believe to accomplish. Form is shadow, 
Substance is illusion. Materiality is dream. Man is because he believes he is. What is man but a dream of the gods? Yet man can be that which he wishes to be. Form and substance, they are but shadows. The mind, the ego, the essence of the god dream, that is real, that is immortal. See and believe, if you would accomplish, Kal. The king did not fully understand. He never fully understood the enigmatical utterances of the wizard. Yet they struck somewhere in his being a dim, responsive chord. So day after day he sat before the mirror of Tuzun Thun. Ever the wizard lurked behind him like a shadow. Then came a day when Cull seemed to catch glimpses of strange lands. They flitted across his consciousness dim thoughts and recognitions. Day by day he had seemed to lose touch with the world. All things had seemed each succeeding day more ghostly and unreal. Only the man in the mirror seemed like reality. Now Cull seemed to be close to the doors of some mightier worlds. Giant vistas gleamed fleetingly. The fogs of unreality thinned. Form is shadow. Substance is illusion. They are but shadows sounded as if from some far country of his consciousness. He remembered the wizard's words, and it seemed to him that now he almost understood. Form and substance. Could not he change himself at will, if he knew the master key that opened this door? What worlds within, what worlds awaited the bold explorer? The man in the mirror seemed smiling at him, closer, closer, a fog enwrapped all, and the reflection dimmed suddenly. Cull knew a sensation of fading, of changing, of merging. Cull! The yell split the silence into a million vibratory fragments. Mountains crashed and worlds tottered as Cull, hurled back by the frantic shout, made a superhuman effort. How or why, he did not know. A crash, and Cull stood in the room of Tuzun Thun before a shattered mirror, mazed and half blind with bewilderment. There before him lay the body of Tuzun Thun, whose time had come at last, and above him stood Brul, the spear slayer, sword dripping red and eyes wide with a kind of horror. Valka, swore the warrior. Cull, it was time I came. Aye, yet what happened? The king groped for words. Ask this traitorous, answered the spear slayer, indicating a girl who crouched in terror before the king. Kull saw that it was she who first sent him to Tuzun Thun. As I came in, I saw you fading into yon mirror, as smoke fades into the sky. By Valka, had I not seen, I would not have believed you had almost vanished when my shout brought you back. Aye, muttered Kull. I had almost gone beyond the door that time. This fiend wrought most craftily, said Brule. Cull, do you not now see how he spun and flung over you a web of magic? Canub of Baal plotted with this wizard to do away with you. And this wench, a girl of the elder race, put the thought in your mind that you would come here. Canu of the council learned of the plot today. I know not what you saw in that mirror, but with it Tuzun Thun enthralled your soul, and almost by his witchery he changed your body to mist. Aye, Cull was still amazed, but being a wizard, having knowledge of all the ages and despising gold, glory, and position, what could Kanub offer Tuzun Thun that would make of him a foul traitor? Gold, power, and position, grunted Brule. The sooner you learn that men are men, whether wizard, king, or thrall, the better you will rule, Cull. Now, what of her? Not, bro. As the girl whimpered and groveled at Cull's feet, she was but a tool. Rise, child, and go your ways. None shall harm you. Alone with Brule, 
Kull looked for the last time on the mirrors of Tuzun Thun. Mayhap he plotted and conjured. Bro, nay, I doubt you not. Yet, was it his witchery that was changing me to thin mist? Or had I stumbled on a secret? Had you not brought me back, had I faded in disillusion? Or had I found worlds beyond this? Brill stole a glance at the mirrors and twitched his shoulders as if he shuddered. Aye, Tuzun Thun stored the wisdom of all the hells here. Let us be gone, Kull, ere they bewitch me too. Let us go then, answered Kull, and side by side they went forth from the House of a Thousand Mirrors, where, mayhap, are prisoned the souls of men. None look now in the mirrors of Tuzun Thun. The pleasure boats shun the shore where stands the wizard's house, and no one goes in the house or to the room where Tuzun Thun's dried and withered carcass lies before the mirrors of illusion. The place is shunned as a place accursed, and though it stands for a thousand years to come, no footsteps shall echo there. Yet Kull, upon his throne, meditates often upon the strange wisdom and untold secrets hidden there, and wonders. For there are worlds beyond worlds, as Cull knows, and whether the wizard bewitched him by words or by mesmerism, vistas did open to the king's gaze beyond that strange door, and Cull is less sure of reality since he gazed into the mirrors of Tuzun Thun. Thank you for listening. For updates, follow our Facebook page. Images courtesy of Unsplash.com Audio samples courtesy of YouTube Audio Library Additional voices by Shazria Please like, comment, subscribe and hit the notification bell.